Hey gang, Zippo. Had a lot of people uh, over the months ask me what the best way is to get a flywheel off. So uh, I've already disassembled this, but I'm going to show you the process. Um, and something a little neat about this little two horse uh, Briggs here. It's got this plate on the side. And this little plate, if you remove it, reveals just an open area here with a boss here and this little two horse engine was actually uh, according to the code had the availability of a electric start a 110 plug in the wall electric start for it this was on a uh, it was either on an edger I think it was on an edger um, but uh, get, get, uh, a friend of mine Andy gave that to me very thankful for that uh, and the reason I pulled these engines down, I pulled a few engines down is because I'm going to start doing a series on governors and how to adjust them. There are, are so many different types of governors and each of them has their own specific uh, process for adjusting. Um, some of you may have noticed that my original governor video is no longer available and that's for good reason. Uh, it was uh, there was misinformation in there so I pulled it down I didn't want to give anybody uh, the wrong information so I've done my due diligence I've done a bunch of studying up and uh, checking and learning and educating myself further on governors uh, with all different types of engines like this one is uh, equipped with a pneumatic governor pneumatic just means the flywheel blows air across the engine to keep the engine cool but it serves double duty it also comes in contact or uh, not comes in contact but blows uh, an, a vein an air vein and we'll pull the cover off here to show you this air vein right here see how this moves back and forth um, its purpose is to govern the speed of the engine under under load it, it wants to keep the engine at a certain speed so there's a specific adjustment for and there's grass all over this thing specific adjustment for this one and there's specific adjustments for a variety of other uh, engines including the cast irons get into the model 19s and the, and the model 23s and 23d you are you, you actually do have differences in them so I'm going to do um, a series of videos for engine types uh, grouped engine types so when I post the videos uh, all you'll need to do is to look at your governor setup and see if it appears visually to be the same as the governor that I'm showing in the video if not check other governor videos that I'll be posting I'm going all the way back to a model B Briggs to a model 19 Briggs, to a 23D Briggs, to a later model 16 horse Briggs. So, and those are all in the cast iron field. These aluminum ones, they have different governing uh, types. And right over here, we've got a five horse. And this five horse, again, has a different governing system on it as well. Uh, it, it's just a spring tension governor. Um, it's internal governor with this one being obviously an external governor but back to uh, the task at hand we are going to just go through the motion on how to get flywheels off of uh, the Briggs engines and I do basically the same thing with each of the Briggs engines uh, to get the flywheels off there are other methods there are other ways there are ways in uh, the manuals that uh, you have to have the proper tool to do it there are ways around that so as I get through uh, some engines and get done with the governor videos and whatnot if my m mind sticks with me and I remember to I'll show uh, different means of, of getting flywheels off with correct tools and then altered uh, altered ways of doing it now I've already popped this flywheel loose but you're gonna get the the premise here is to wedge 
and the screwdriver obviously is too small okay I'm just using the screwdriver as an example you're going to want to wedge and I usually use a wood block or wood shims like you would use to uh, uh, secure the casing on a um, on a door or a window to square everything up just a regular wood shim but stick it in there and you'll wedge things in good and tight up against the block and the flywheel and then I usually put a socket on the end I don't know if this one's big enough it is I'll put a socket on the end of the uh, crankshaft just to protect the end of the crankshaft put it on and they have a special tool Briggs does that mimics this same thing it, it, it's a punch that's designed to fit over there and protect the end so that you can wedge and then tap a couple times with your wedges in place and then after that you are able to remove your flywheel so that's the process that I use most often when I am removing flywheels. I will wedge between the block and the flywheel and knock the flywheel off. I'm going to go another step on this video. Uh, there's going to be you know, a variety of different information on here. I've already you know, talked about the air vane or what uh, Briggs calls a pneumatic. Um, but another key factor in these engines is this little piece right here you don't set the timing on a Briggs or all right I'm gonna say it this way you don't set a timing on this Briggs okay as I go through the different engines uh, I'm gonna to try to get more in depth on your quote unquote timing um, this is a very specific key this is not a regular piece of key stock this is a soft what's called pot metal so it's a powdered metal that's pressed and formed and it is designed to shear if there's a problem with the engine that's the weak link it's designed to be a weak link on purpose to help save from any internal damage to the engine so only replace a sheared flywheel key with the proper flywheel key they're available you can get them at just about any hardware store usually in packs of five for a couple or three bucks they're cheap insurance against damaging your engine so I've covered just a few things here on this engine and uh, Briggs in general uh, mainly the purpose of the video was to get the flywheel off but I'll put general information as a title for the video but there's that next this engine has no spark I checked the coil I've got the right ohms of resistance so my points were underneath the flywheel on this engine my guess is I've got just a little bit of oxidization on the points all I'm going to do is pop this cover off clean the surface of those points throw the flywheel back on see if I have returned spark to the engine if so this little guy will sit on the bench and probably just purr like a kitten I'm guessing because edgers really didn't get used a whole lot in their day and another little thing I know I'm going on and on but if you look you see the condition of this engine it's got a considerable amount of uh, oil residue on it um, most generally you want to keep your engines clean but when I get a used engine I actually like to see a used engine with oil or I mean not a lot of oil obviously because the crankcase vent on this just drops you know oil vapors and it collects dust and the dust turns into a kind of a clay like substance in fact I just cleaned this piece off and this is what you wind up with and you can actually pinch it together and it, it, it forms like like a clay okay um, that tells me they've been adding oil another thing that tells me is look at the condition of the oil cap it's clean it's a lot cleaner than the rest of the engine 
Well, it tells me they check that oil and they check it regularly. Also, the paint being missing on the tabs. There's little tricks that you can do when you're uh, investigating in, or looking into buying an engine. And that's one of the things uh, that I always look for. I look for uh, dirty engines. Not dirty, dirty, dirty engines, but I look for dirty engines. The last clean engine that I bought um, has been about five six years ago and uh, bought it as a non-running engine it had been restored well restored was only cosmetic um, needed rings badly had no spark had to replace the points in it and as an old Briggs model WI is actually a Sears 500 series uh, made for Sears by Briggs uh, but it uh, translated to a Briggs WI. So yeah, you go buy a really clean, nice, purdy engine that somebody has said has been restored, you don't know that until you get that engine running. Engines like this that you buy in their natural state with the oil and, and, and residue on them uh, most generally shows it's an engine that's been at least maintained and you have a better chance of getting a good running engine than you do with an engine that is spotless not even necessarily new paint but just spotless and I always check the oil in them too I check the condition of the oil and I'll I always have um, a little pair of pliers that I take and I push it down in there and I get down into the oil pan and then getting down into the oil pan I'll pull it back out and I'll see how much sludge I've got on the end of the uh, pair of pliers I'll show you the pliers here Sorry for sniffling allergies again, but I just take the pliers and I stick it down in the oil tank and I squirm it around. And the, the beauty of 30 weight non-detergent oil is it allows the particulates to settle into the bottom of the oil pan, which is what you want. So I get in there and I check and if I've got silver that I pull out, I know I've probably got a ring problem but if I just pull out a uh, dark gray that's normal I'm okay with that and it's good to go so it just I guess quite a few little uh, tidbits on this video and uh, I hope that I've kept your guys interest long enough to make it to the end stay tuned there are going to be more videos on like I say um, governors on these engines and the differences and how to set each one up individually as per your particular model that matches the engines that I will be doing the governor setups on so stay tuned for those in the meantime I'm gonna get back to work on this see if I can get this little guy running we'll holler at y'all later Zippo I'm out